so today in this beautiful California day, I want to talk about this beautiful 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia Velos. Velos, it's like something else, but it's a Velos, it's Alfa Romeo, it's a red, nice, beautiful color. I love it so much. And it's the same as a 2017, but it's 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia. So what I do like about the car, and you're probably gonna like it too, that's the style of it. I think that's why since 2017 they're not changing it, because it's a unique Italian style. Uh, since you probably know already, maybe you don't know, but you can Google it. Since 2007, Fiat, I mean, and Alfa Romeo also, same as a Fiat, owned by Chrysler Corporation. So that's why they did some collaboration, and that's why they brought this car back. In United States, same as a Fiat, just to try, see how the people gonna react, what they're gonna do, are they gonna buy it, they're gonna love it or not, and it looks like they do love it, and the people who buy buying it, uh, they waiting for it. I mean, right now, it's kinda not so huge shortage. You might gonna see it, and you might gonna buy it, lease it, or brand new, but in my opinion, to buy 2023 Alfa Romeo for 45,000, you can buy exactly the same car. 2017 for like less than 20,000, you're gonna get about the same car. There is a different modification being made uh, during the six, six years period of time, but still, if the car driving on the street, you're not gonna see the difference on 2023 and 2017. There is might gonna be some small difference on the headlight and the tail light. You might gonna notice, but probably you're not. So, because it's Italian. And the way they brought the car to the market in the United States, just to show it, you know, there is a Italian design, there is a European style. If you love it, if you like it, just buy it. But again, we're not gonna produce it so many cars. It's not gonna be Toyota. It's gonna be kind of demand, kind of luxury, mid-size class car. Uh, I don't know if you can compare the same car with BMW 3 Series or Mercedes C-Class because those cars, there's a lot of them on the market that's about the same price. That's about the same price for the lease if you wanna get it. But if you wanna get piece of the Europe, piece of Italy, you want to buy something different. So the money you're going to spend for the BMW Mercedes, you're going to spend the same money to buy the Alfa Romeo. But is it worth it to buy it? I mean, that's only always your choice, not mine. But in my choice, in my opinion, I wouldn't get this car. There is a lot of different reasons why. But again, if I want to buy it and drive it for a while and sell it, I wouldn't buy the new one because the depreciation on this car, it's going so fast. It's not like Mercedes, but same time, it's better to buy the used one, drive it a little bit and sell it for about the same money instead of buying used one. I mean, instead of buying a new one, but you can lease it and enjoy it. So the design, it's so unique in my opinion. It's so cool. It doesn't look like all other cars, especially the front of the car, the front end, the, the, the grill, the bumper, the way they made it all around the headlights and the way it looks, the wheels on this car, they again, they unique, they, they doesn't, it's not looking the same as the BMW or Mercedes, it's something different. And uh, is it a spacious inside? Yes. If it's only for yourself or maybe for you and your friends, yeah, that's kind of nice car, but as a family car, it's not going to worth it. It's not going to fit your family. In my opinion, I wouldn't do that experience, but the way it drives, it's kind of sporty. The suspension on this car, the settings, it's been made uh, just, you can feel the piece of Italy. You can feel like the Ferrari, you're driving kind of expensive car. Uh, and again, even the engine, it's 2.0 turbo engine, but it has 280 horsepower if you're getting four cylinder. There is a six cylinder optional, and you're gonna get a lot of all wheel drive, a lot of torque and the horsepower, but we're not talking about that. So there is a common problem on the old uh, Alfa Romeo, which you might gonna face if you're gonna buy the used one with some mileage on it, like 60,000, 70,000, you might gonna feel the misfire on it, you might gonna get the problem with the engine. It's a common problem, that's normal. Transmission usually not going bad on those cars, they kinda build strong. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you some prices about the engine transmission, and you're gonna see the difference, and you're gonna get my idea. Uh, but for now, I just wanna show you how this car look when you're driving it in sunny California every day and you have a red color. There is probably the special name for this color because it's not only red, it's not only pearl. There is, it's an Italian car and it's assembled in Italy. When you open the door on the barcode, you're gonna see the big letters made in Italy, not in the United States. Even this car, 
company owned by Chrysler, they still producing it in Italy and bringing it back to United States just to show it to you how this car is unique. So this again, the design of this car is made so unique, so nice. And from the front of the car, you're gonna see the grill. It doesn't look they took it from the BMW because the grill they made Alfa Romeo made back in 2017, even before that. BMW didn't even think about it. But right now, you're gonna see the BMW. But again, uh, in a daily driving car, if you're gonna see this on the street, you're not gonna say, oh, it looks like BMW, it looks like Mercedes, like Honda. No, it's Alfa Romeo. It has its own unique design and unique components, which you might gonna find it only on this car. So as I said, this car has four cylinder turbo engine. And again, this car right now, it's a brand new, almost 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia Velos. And it has only 1,000, 1,600 miles on it. And when I just started, it was kind of running rough, misfiring, and I was thinking, ah, it's normal right now for the new cars. They always put add in a lot of different things. It's closing the jar, opening, there is some extra valves, whatever. But when it's warmed up and I drove it a little bit, I brought it back, I stopped it, and it was on the parking, and the car started misfiring. So it, it, it was feeling like misfire. It's not like check engine light on, whatever, but the engine was running rough. So in my opinion, it's not built for long period of time it built for your period of lease so you're gonna drive it three years you're gonna return it and some other people are gonna buy it that's why it has only 50,000 miles on the powertrain warranty after that do whatever you want to do that's all yours so again from my experience of those cars so the engine gonna last about 50 60,000 miles until you're gonna do some work on it to do some work on it, there is a special part. You cannot buy it from the Chrysler. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna fit. You have to order it from the Alfa Romeo dealer. You have to wait for it, maybe. And the cost of the engine, it's about 3,500, 4,000. Depends where you're gonna find it and how many mile, miles on the used engine gonna be. But the transmission for this car, it's only 1,000 bucks. It's even less. Sometimes you can find it for six, $700. That means transmission, it's super rare when it's going bad. But the engine with those misfire and four-cylinder performance engine, you're gonna get a lot of problem after 50,000. But again, if there is a lot of drivers who's not doing maintenance on time, they're gonna cause the problems for themselves or for the next owner of the car. But if you're buying it brand new, you're gonna keep it for a while. You're gonna do the maintenance on time. You're gonna check if it's leaking oil, if it's not, if it's smoking, you might gonna adjust something, take it to mechanic shop and fix it on time you're not gonna face a huge problems with the engine that's again in my opinion I did see a lot of Alfa Romeo with over 100,000 and they were feeling okay but probably they were feeling okay because the engine already been replaced so I would say uh, good luck to you but same time if you want to buy it just to you know get some experience of life life is too short if you're gonna get Alfa Romeo because all other friends they get in honda or ford or something else and you're going to get alfa romeo they're going to say why you're going to drive uh you're going to show it to them what's the performance of this car the way it looks the design they're going to get it they're going to appreciate it they're going to say wow you are the kind of different person from me and uh i do appreciate your choice so we're going to talk about trunk area just a little bit because i always can talk about apple play apple play how you can connect your phone and play some music on it that's super nice you can do the same back in like 2005 with toyota prius but we're talking about the quality the way it made so there is a cover for the for the battery right the battery is in the trunk so it looks like it's constantly falling off not because somebody ripped it just because it's not sitting there it's okay so now we see the panels right so what's the panels that's uh, that's the quality, right? I mean, in my opinion, it's not the quality because after a couple of years, all this stuff gonna fall apart since it's a brand new car and it already looks like not so good. So what else we're gonna get in the trunk? There is no there is no spare tire, right? So there is no spare tire. There is some tools. You have a screwdriver. You have some fuses, and that's it. You have a tool hook right so you can hook it up and tow your car to the service even when if you're gonna get a flat tire you're not gonna be able to replace it just because the car doesn't have it so what about the space in the trunk can i fit myself in i don't want to even try because it's not so many space but i know in fact i can put the stroller one inside and it's gonna be fine i can do some grocery and it's gonna be fine it's gonna be enough space for me because again we're talking about alfa romeo that's a performance car that's not the family car but it is a performance so the factory the designer from the beginning it tells you do not put any stuff inside just put like a luggage or maybe if you want to put your suit there or something else like grocery 
at the most. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to do a lot of space in the trunk because we're not talking about the family car. We're talking about performance. We're talking about some modern, uh, some modern, nice luxury mid-size car. I cannot even put it back that cover because it's kind of made ugly way. So we're not talking about the quality of this car. We're talking about design. The way the tail light made on it nothing you can compare to that there is none of the other car i can say you know it looks like alfa romeo no it's not what's cool about 2023 alfa romeo before they used to do q4 only on a uh, all-wheel drive edition this one two-wheel drive and maybe some of them do have the q2 but i never saw it before so i see here it's a q2 so what about the exhaust? I mean, exhaust, it's kind of loud, not loud, but it's making that sound. Like if you're driving the Fiat 500, but if you draw one, if you never draw one, so I'm gonna show it to you probably later on, the, the sound of exhaust, it made by someone who understand, we have a small engine, four cylinder turbo, we do have a lot of power for that small engine. So let's make the sound of the exhaust kind of strong. So the people are gonna get the feeling the way they're driving the Ferrari, they're not driving Alfa Romeo, they're driving some piece of Italy design and some Italian European car. It's not boring. It is a, it's a cool car and you're going to get an idea as soon as you're going to drive it. So let's talk about quality of this car. If you're going to check the handles, all the plastic, all the rubbers, all the moldings, the way they made, they made straight. I mean, if you compare with a lot of new cars, you're going to see the difference. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Here, I'm talking about the quality. They made some quality, some not so, so I would say there is no quality at all, but looks like there is a different people working on this car. And some people, they do in molding, some people do in the trunk compartment, some people do in the engine. And after somehow they meet in together. It's like the friends, you know, you like, you like to play baseball. The other guy like to do the jet ski, the third, friend you have he loves to drink beer and just watching you and your other guy so it looks like it's the same the people been doing different kind of stuff and they met together in one room and they say okay you got this stuff you got that stuff let's put it together and made one car you know even they were drunk they say okay we're gonna do it and they made it it's it's a beautiful and um, one of the most important points for me because i'm checking the details i'm checking the whole car that's super nice super cool but I'm checking the glasses all the time because I do have a huge experience with glasses, windshield, sides, doesn't matter. With glass for automotive industry. And I can tell here they're spending money on it. So the glasses here, it's a Pilkington, right? So the company who's producing the windshields and the side windows, and they're kind of expensive. So if you want to buy brand new windshield for your car, Pilkington instead of the Chinese one, it's going to be significantly more expensive. Just because again, right now, if you're going to check a lot of cars, a lot of cars, they went to Chinese windshields, Chinese side, uh, side windows, because they want to pay cheaper for the stuff like that. And they're going to sell the car more expensive. So they're going to get more profit. In this case, materials they use it they kind of high quality so they spend the money on it it's not like you buying the car and they just made from nothing the leather on the seats i honestly i did see a lot of mercedes after three years this is just ripping falling apart but alfa romeo i saw a couple with high mileage i mean the seats worn out a little bit but they never falling apart they never ripping apart that's so cool and uh, i do like it a lot when you get in inside the car, the first thing you're going to notice, uh, you're going to try to find the push start button, right? Because you do have a key with no actual key, just a smart key. So you're going to check the left, you're going to check the right, the middle, and then you're going to find it. So the push start button, it's going to be on the steering wheel, located same as a Ferrari. So they're giving you that kind of feeling. You again, you're in a sport car, it's a high performance. It's not like your regular Camry or your regular Corolla, that's something else. So the second one, you're going to see the paddle shifting on the left and right. So basically you can change the gear while you're driving it and do like more sporty stuff instead of just driving regularly. You're going in the cluster, you're going to see the middle screen. It's not changing. I mean, there is some design they changed it since 2017, but the idea is the same. The one cool thing about this car I like, that's a regular USB. Hey, hey it's not USB type C. That's what I like about this car, not about the other one. There is a for sure USB type C in the middle, so you can plug your phone if you have the different one. There is a phone charging pot in the middle of the central armrest box. 
there is a spot for the key you probably can put it on and it's going to charge your battery if you need it but again the idea of the charging pod i cannot remember but i only know first car i see with pod like that it was 2016 toyota prius there is nothing else in those years been making it besides the toyota so toyota is always on the top of the industry the way i'm feeling the materials because i'm not thinking the way it looks like the way it drives i'm feeling the way i'm sitting inside the way i'm touching the steering wheel all the components the the transmission shifter you know and the way i can touch the buttons i can change some things on it and it's kind of comfortable it's not comfortable for me as a size because again i don't understand why this door panel made kind of high and it's kind of empty inside so the soundproofing is so so on this car but a lot of different things like the puddle shifting they're kind of cool and if you're gonna go to sport mode you're not gonna get a lot of power you're not gonna feel it like the ferrari but you're gonna feel there is some kind of torque it gives you for this engine it gives you for this car and it's kind of enough if you want to get the super sport one i would say get v6 engine and all wheel drive so you're gonna see the huge difference between this and other one so all information provided on the cluster for me it's more than enough there is a mileage there is a distance to empty uh, all i can read it's easy what i do like about the cluster it's not digital i hate digital because the digital in my opinion it's like the it's something simple it's something cheap but the narrows the way the way it's moving i mean it's kind of that that power of feeling you driving the car you can see your rpm you can see your speed it's moving going up and down and it's not digital like land rover has that you know tuk, 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 tuk. so it's not it's not cool but alfa romeo it's really cool in 2023 they're not doing the they doing analog and they put an alfa romeo everywhere on the cluster it says alfa romeo that's super cool what i don't like about the central display again that's that's all kind of old for my opinion seven eight years old and the screen is too small for navigation you can't read it you cannot use it it's so hard to use it believe me or not that central joystick you can adjust it you can i mean you have to stop the car you have to take some time and do the things you have to do with multimedia otherwise it's not comfortable to use it while you're driving it one more point about the car itself that's the climate control the climate control it gives you a lot of cool air if you're going to do it on low turn on your uh, ac all the way to the max but it's not feeling it so if you if i'm going low right now it's feeling cool it's feeling cold but if i'm doing 65 64 outside we have about i would say close to 90 maybe but if i'm doing 70 it just turned it off almost completely the fan so where is the sensor i don't understand i see the sensor on the top of the dashboard and it's supposed to work so it's supposed to give you more it's supposed to give me more cold air but it doesn't want to give it to me i don't know why maybe in italy it's not the same way as in california but i don't like it the heated seats maybe it's optional but it is present in this car uh, on the back on the front so today we talk about this beautiful alfa romeo in red color it's super nice it's super cool if you want to get this car as a spare i wouldn't get this car as a main one because you're not gonna like it the much if you're gonna keep this car on the weekend or for some period of time during your week keep the prius on the side get the alfa romeo enjoy your life please subscribe put some thumbs up put some comments below and i love you so much thank you so much for watching it